the first time we saw men truly utilize the Holy Spirit was at the upper room. That is why you say upper room experience. When you read the book of Acts, you will discover that as good as the impute of Jesus Christ, as powerful as Jesus Christ was, all the investment he did upon the apostles was insufficient. It lacks the ability to help them to survive in their journey in Christianity. No matter how much you do, after he left, they went back a fishing. All of them backslide. The best among them deny him. Many of them lose their ordination. Why? Because there was a prerequisite course that they did not engage. They didn't attend a class. There was one of the class that was a prerequisite. So all of them spill over. And Jesus realized that he lived this guy for so long. There may not be hope for the body of Christ again. He had to appear to them again. He said, Return back. Go and tarry in Jerusalem. Until you are fully attended the class in the spirit and you have been accredited carry Jerusalem to utilize the possibility of the spirit where it is coming unto you because until the spirit of God is poured upon us from on high that wilderness will remain the way it is but when the spirit is poor the possibilities that will begin to find expression you yourself cannot define it will rather define you why they gather in the upper room suddenly as the father has promised the spirit of the lord descended upon them and we saw a people that were feeble a people that do not have boldness sufficiently enough begin to function in certain dimension man cannot be able to gain see what they had was the upper room experience the upper room experience is an intercourse with the holy spirit the upper room experience is an outpouring of the spirit the upper room experience is an avalanche of the spirit it's a time when the channel of the spirit of man is open it's the time where the strength of men begin to find expression. There lies their strength and there lies their advantage. The entire church and the entire body of Christ today, I believe, are supposed to always return back to the upper room. The reason why the church of Christ today is weak and beggarly is because many people have left the upper room. We are not supposed to leave the upper room. We are supposed to remain in the upper room. The reason why your pastor can no longer bless you is because he has left the upper room it is in the upper room that you journey to zion it is in the upper room that you are given a new dimension of god to function with it is in the upper room that you are supplying a new strength no wonder when the believers we are threatened in the book of Acts chapter 4 the bible said they returned back to the upper room and they reported herod and at night an angel came and slay him it is in the upper room that many things are done it is in the upper room that you do business in deep waters it is in the upper room now you do business with God beyond the realms of man. Many of us have left the upper room. We are in the under room. We are feasting and dining with carnal men. You have left the placement where God has put you. You see, tarry ye in the upper room. You are supposed to remain in Jerusalem. But the place was given unto you is at the upper room. The expectation of your heart, the desires of your heart must be gazed upon the Lord. All of them were together in one accord. It's the experience of the upper room. The church today have neglected the upper room. That is why we have all kinds of chaos going on in the body of Christ. Men and women could no longer be able to decipher God. They could no longer be able to have intercourse with the Spirit of God because they have left the upper room. Yes, you may leave the upper room to go out to witness as a living witness, but you return back to the upper room again to receive strength. It is in the upper room that men are made witness of the Spirit. It is in the upper room that men are made strength. The upper room is the mystery of the secret place. Anytime you find yourself in the secret place, you actually are the upper room. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. Somehow, when a man begins to dwell in the secret place, he's giving him a strength in that mankind cannot be able to get see many people have not been strong in god today because they never have an experience in the upper room i don't know how they joined the back wagon of christianity they have never had the privilege and the time where would they have an intercourse with the spirit of god and the reason of that is simply because they are feasting with men in the under room where the lord god is doing business in the upper room mind you that day the holy ghost descended but there were men on the under room many people were there in the many were in the same temple but they were in the under room the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost came strategically 
to them that we are on the upper womb. The other ones only saw the manifestation of men that were drunk and they felt they were drunk with new wine. It was the fulfillment of prophecy, yea. It was the emergence of a new set of people. You and I are supposed to continually remain in the upper room. It is an intercourse with the Spirit of God. That is where your strength lies, my friend. I don't know how much more you have not been found there. Return back. When a man is not found in the upper room consistently, your life will be aligned to the patterns of darkness. Your life will be characterized with the operation of darkness and you will be deprived from experiencing life. What are the things that are available in the upper room? It is in the upper room that of course you are given the Holy Spirit. I don't want to believe that there are people here that are not filled with the Holy Spirit but adventure if they are. During the time of the general impartation, we will have to give you privilege to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because that is where your upper room journey will begin from. It's frustrating if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, in Latvia, we do some kind of terrible kind of prayer. We do 30 hours prayer. You can spend five days just, I don't know how you could do just one day meeting. And every day, we want to do meeting, the have days, five days, four days, three days. And you must pray. We have enough time for you to pray. Whether in the flesh or in the spirit, we pray. You know, you can only know people that can pray when there's enough time to pray. Now this one that will give you microphone for those two hours. We will not know your capacity. Let's have 30 hours. If it's not enough, we shift it to 50 hours. 60 hours, 70 hours. You will not die. But we will know, you will know your limit. And you will know that you need God to help you. There is nothing for you to boast about. So the other person that did 10 minutes and you that stopped at 30 hours, you cannot go 31. You know that you too need help. As much as him too need help. That's the only way you can know whether you truly have contacted prayer power. Because prayer power is not what you shout. Listening to my friend Lawrence Oyo or listening to Joe Sunday. No. Prayer power is your ability to remain praying and continue to pray and remain praying again and continue to pray. You don't love to pray. You propose in your heart to pray. No man loves prayer. Don't deceive yourself. You thought Babadola loved praying? No, he's a lie. He proposed in his heart to pray and he is helped by God. Prayer is a hard thing for every more spiritual man. It's not something that the energy of the flesh can advance. It's something that the energy of the flesh can advance that he can love. Anytime he has to pray, he has to ask the Lord to help him. And when the Lord begins to help you, you now begin to see a strength you cannot understand. So he does not even plan to stay for those hours. Suddenly he discovers he has stayed those hours. If you truly pray, when you want to truly pray, and you take away your clock, you discover the time, move faster. If you are taking the time, it will not move. Why? You are still in the flesh. That's the, the reason why many of you could not pray. So you felt the one hour was too long. When you take away the clock and just begin to pray, you will leave the realm of mortality. You will enter the upper room. And in the upper room, when the Holy Ghost comes, will tell you, stop, stop, stop. You can no longer stop again. You have journeyed beyond the realm of mortality. The reason why you are still mortal is because you have not engaged the realm of prayer in the upper room for long. Anyone that come out from the upper room, we know him. There is a transformation. He has dined with the immortals. Now he is given the placement among the gods. Why do you think Elijah can pray for all those hours? Just to unlock the heavens, you have to pray for seven hours. How many hours do you think he prayed to shut down the heavens? It must have been times two. You don't know that it's easier. It's very, very easy to cast a thing eh, than to bind it. Something can be bound for many years. I can just come and cast it very, very fast. 
But for somebody to bind you to remain in darkness for many years, the person must have been very intelligent in legislation and in priesthood. And he must have been consistent in it. The idols that are keeping you in the way you are, they are very active. If they are not active, you might have been free by now. <laughs> I get what I'm saying? And you that intend to come and have superiority over them, you are sleeping. I just need you to know you may not have a future. Occulting people every day, they leave from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. 12 to 4. 12 to 4. What do you think they are doing? Exercise? No. They are attending class in the spirit. They are more acquainted with the spirit world than you. Many of you shout every day. And you are the head, you are not the tail. You are powerful than them. But these guys know more than you. They study the Bible more than you. So that they can be able to teach their legislation. Have you these people you want to cast out devil? They are quoting the scriptures for you. And you wonder which can you open it? Which verse is that one? And if you are done the the scripture, you will believe a false spirit. We were in a prayer meeting and the lady began to prophesy. And she was giving air to darkness. And the people were shouting and clapping, hallelujah. I said, young woman, keep quiet. Because I knew the Lord doesn't talk that way. Small, small children you can see, they have rank in the spirit. You are the only one that do not have because you do not appear in the heavens. You don't used to attend classes in the spirit. The upper room experience is a class in the spirit that everyone must have to attend. The reason why your country people go every day is so that they can sit again and they equip. That is why, because of their consistency, every day, if they can keep flying every day, it will take one month. They know the technology to engage to kill a man. I don't know about people used to wonder me. I used to get surprised today. How can somebody join which is Awiza today and start flying today? How long have you been in Christianity? Can you fly from here to there? What's the problem? You can't fly in the spirit, they fly. They change to objects. The funny part is that they can also hold you bound. They can tie you. They can attack you. When's the last time you attack a principality? You are free. So you can see small, small children. Small, small children. 10 years, 5 years, they have ranking in the spirit and they can kill a pastor. They can kill their mother. Although their mother is a prayer warrior. What I need you to understand is if you do not always appear in the upper room, you may never be strengthened by God. Never. The upper room is a place where you utilize the Holy Spirit. Create more time for the Holy Spirit to pray. I get what I'm saying now. I need more time. Apart from the Holy Spirit, the next thing that is given for you, is given to you in the upper room is power. I don't know about you, but I have been. My quest for power did not start while I became born again. It started even while I was a carnal man. And I've always told people, if I did not know God today, I would have joined a cult. Somehow, I realized that a carnal and a natural life is a threat. No man survives just like that. I have never seen a great man that is just natural. It's a lie. That your uncle that is very rich and successful, that is going to church every day, and you know he doesn't pray, he's lying to you. There's an altar you go to that you pay more sacrifice than the offering you give to people in church. Economy is not buying and selling. It's the warfare of princes and the clashes of others. That is why people that start it naturally start the business and they die after two days. Others after three days. Others after one year. If you want it to survive beyond, you must engage an altar. 
There is nothing that a natural man can do and remain consistent and get a dividend without putting the spirit emblem of it. Marriage is warfare. Economic is warfare. Your academic is warfare. You don't understand. Many of you study to pass exams. Some of us. We just understand what we do with the spirit. And the five questions that they will set in the exams will just appear in our dream. And we'll read only it and go to the exam and write it and get out of it. And our adventure, we did not read it. We we'll write anything and just we we'll collect it. You don't believe this is a possible, they will never work for you. Have you ever had a carry over before and they take it away and put you, give, you, give you what you don't deserve? That is how God works. The same thing whether in your business, whether in anything you do, that there is an advantage that comes by the supply of power and by the Spirit of God. I have known that there is nothing natural about succeeding in life at all. Nothing. Many people are possessed by Spirit, they don't know. They may not know. They will tell you that something used to do this to them, do this to them, but actually the spirit that possess them to grant them advantage. And you don't want any demonic spirit to possess you, but you want to be successful. How? You are not in occultism, you are not in Holy Spirit Society, you didn't join Freemason, you didn't join Illuminati, you didn't join Ogoni, you didn't join anyone. The Holy Ghost, you didn't join the society. How do you want to survive? The best of you is to be a normal human being that can never be remembered. I have known a long time ago that no great man has ever survived being natural. And I knew that if my life must be relevant, I must subscribe to a power beyond me. And I began to find a way to join anything that is possible. Until I encounter God. And I realized that there is power in God also. But the realm of power in God comes by the Holy Spirit. But there are diverse kinds of realm of power that is not of the Holy Ghost. Whether you like it or not, when you want the realm of power, it will come in the upper room. You must understand that without power, your life will be a challenge. You can die anyhow. There is just something stupid the devil will do and you will die. The things that people do naturally and they escape, you will do it and you will die. You may just sleep and you will say your hand, your hand and you are gone. Your head, your head, you are gone. How do you join into power? Of course, they will tell you knowledge is power, I agree. But a knowledge that is mixed with prayer is power. What you know mixed with a prayer is power. When a man begins to pray, he joins into the realm of power by default. The kind of prayer you pray, you must be able to pray more than this. The people that taught us prayer taught us only prayer. We pray to a point we feel as though we have been punished for praying. Have you prayed to a point you are angry with God? We wonder God. Are you punishing us? Because the more you pray, the more answers do not come. So we thought we were praying because of answers. We never knew we were praying for certain rewards of dimensions. So when those rewards of dimensions in God begin to come, we will thank God for not answering the prayer we were praying. Imagine if he just answered the prayer. Those rewards, we have never gotten them. But those rewards that came brought all the answers to the prayer point we were praying. You don't understand what I'm saying. All the time you waste today that look as though you're wasting praying. Forget about everything you wrote in your prayer point. He may not answer any one of them. But he may give you wisdom. That wisdom will bring everything you write there. If he doesn't give you wisdom, he may open your eye. He may give you power. He may just give you something. And that something he gives you, he may touch your lips. And anytime you hold microphone to sing the heart of men bones. And that will bring all the things you write there. Because prayer is taught in heaven. Not every prayer does go to heaven and diffuse and bring answers. 
Some of them are what? Stored. Those ones that are stored are terrible. They are dangerous. The Bible says the cloud is full of rain. It will what? Have you seen, an, have you seen a rain that chases even the farmer? A diligent farmer from his farm to his house. There are certain kind of rain that can shake the foundation of these places. There is a way that when prayers fill up heaven, when you begin to descend upon a man, the result you see is what you are seeing in our life. There are many men today, you may they may be here. Nobody may ever know you, and you have prayed more than many people can ever imagine. Don't worry, the cloud is gathered. Let it be filled. When it begins to descend, people will look at you and wonder when did you do all of these things? What they never knew that when they were praying for God, for chicken, for cow, for house, for boyfriend, for girlfriend, God was giving bread to the eater, but seed was given to the sower. So that the time of harvest can come and yours come in a bountiful dimension. You won't begin to come as a kind of reward of a dimension, of a kind of operation. And at that time, they were done eating their own bread. And they go everywhere looking for bread again. Many of you are praying for a good boyfriend. While others are praying to become mothers. Can you be a good mother without having a good husband? No, you will. What you want is a boyfriend. What you want is a good whatever. Many times we major on many ephemeral things when we are supposed to major on the main things. And like I said, if you have not learned how to waste yourself praying unto the Lord, you may never get the reward of prayer. You might have had to engage prayer for a very long time for you to get it reward. Like I said, you have to be able to ensure that you go just beyond your normal way routine of prayer. You have to be able to enlarge your goals. Try out your capacity of prayer. How many of you have ever prayed 10 hours here? Stretch. Let me know. 10 hours stretch. You have about five hours. Pascal, Judith, go again. You would have followed us to Lafia. You will see small, small children like this. Praying 30 hours. They don't die. Never die. And you will not sit down. When we begin to pray, you can't sit down. You will stand for 10 hours and will pray. You won't die. How many of you have sit in one place watching movie for 20 hours? Did you die? I told you something. You did not propose in your heart. Anything you propose in your heart to do, God is strengthening you. The reason why your tongues, the reason why your strength, the reason why your worship, the reason why your preaching, the reason why those things does not have eternal relevance is because you have not invested enough of life into it. Your life first must go into it before the life of God will come. Until your life die into something, the life of God cannot be defeated. In Has your life been dead into your own worship? I have a friend in Zaria. He was just learning keyboard. That guy can stay in keyboard for 24 hours. Just playing keyboard. I don't know what he's doing. He's just learning. If that guy play keyboard here yeah, for you, fear will catch you. These are some of the guys that travel to Shasama playing keyboard for them. Most of the guys that you see release sounds, all of this you listen to, they, they, they are alive, die into it first. When your life is dead into your prayer, your prayer carries, even if you just pray in tongues alone, it gives people life. When your life cannot die into a thing, how can it give life again? The protocol of giving of life is first dying. Then life is revealed. You lose your life first before you are given a life. But many of you, you still have your own life. The reason why I'm talking about praying for that long beyond that time is because you need to be able to keep up that your life. Let me tell you something. When you begin, you may can be praying one hour, two hours, three hours, no problem. That's your capacity. But you must go deeper. The more you go deeper, the more many things are revealed to you. You go deeper again. Many things are revealed more. And the problem of many of you is that you don't know how to pray. 
You thought prayer is wah, 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 wah. you see that's the point. When we come for prayer meeting, I see somebody shout the most. I just give him time. I know he will soon hibernate. You don't understand. When you want to really pray long hours, you go slowly, my friends. How do you pray in your room? Do you shout like that? Let's be frank. So why are you trying to impress us? That is why you remain within three hours and four hours. You start gradually. Ensure you are saying something. Ensure you are making contact with the spirit of truth. Forget about your clock, but put your phone on flight mode. And just begin to glide. Just begin to engage the tongues. Engage it. Try to see the end of tongues. Just begin to engage. Be engaging, be engaging, be engaging. If you want to repeat one tongues forever, repeat, I don't care. Just engage. When you have enough time to pray, you will start from the flesh, you enter the spirit. From the spirit, you return back to the flesh. From the flesh, you return back to the spirit. No other. Just continue. One of the things I know that God is that will bring you to the end of yourself if you don't run away. At that end of yourself, God will not be revealed. Then, at the tail end, what you receive is what? Power. I get what I'm saying now. Because any man that you see function in power today, the Babalona, the all of these people, let me tell you the truth. This was the protocol they went through. There is always a track record of their timing in prayer. And when we wanted to do 50 hours prayers, we thought we would die. The only thing that happened to us is that we, we could not talk for some days. I do not mean that your voice has gone. Like me now, my voice don't used to go pray. The reason why your voice will go is because you are not used to it. You know, if your voice goes, when you shout them all, you break into another level again. You don't understand. You, you have not tried. When your voice went small, you now stop praying. No. Shout it them all. It will give you another voice will be given to you. When you break again, you shout again. You break again. These things are in layers. You will never die. Highest, you will cough out some blood. And that's all. Don't say that. Of course, you will cover up law. You will. But you are breaking into realms in the spirit. And the devil see you, he will fear. And do you know what? Encounters will become natural for you. I don't know about you, but anytime I pray for long, I see visions natural. When I sleep, I see if I'm taken to the spirit faster. And encounters is natural. When you pray for long, you sharpen your discernment. Suddenly, you begin to hear faster. So, when you pass by people, you begin to hear what for them. Now, after those kind of 50 hours prayer, when I pass by even market women, I begin to give them prophecy. I pass by a market woman, I will call her, this is your name, okay, this is your son, this, 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 she will look at me. She will give me things for free, I will say thank you. When I go to a shop to buy a thing, I will just use the prophecy. And they will give you something and tell you thank you again. You get what I'm saying now? You must understand that there is advantage in this thing. But because you have not prayed for long, these dimensions cannot break in you. You pray for two hours, your hand begins to shake. And so what? Move from the shaking of the hand. Let your eyes shake. Let your chest shake. Let your head shake. Let your legs shake. Let everything you shake. When they are done shaking, they will stand still. Then things will be revealed. Time is going to come. Visions may distract you in the place of prayer. Forget about them and continue to pray. And then, guy, anytime we pray small, you will tell us that we should stop. You see, we are doing 30 hours prayer now. Some people, one guy came there, one pastor came. You see, what kind of prayer that you just pray? There is no prayer point. You just pray straight. The guy came. We began praying. <laughs> He saw people praying, praying, praying. One hour passed, two hours passed, three hours passed, four hours passed. But, ah! The guy went and sat down. As he, he thought he would stop. We will, we, will, we will still pray. We will still pray. He was a pastor. We cannot tell him to stand up because if he was not trained well, you know, sometimes you get ashamed of them. But there, are, there is a way you cannot rebuke a leader. That's why you should be made right now. You know, you reach a point nobody can talk to you. What was his complaint? That we did not give time for people to see visions. To share the vision. Because he came and to him, he has a vision. The guy that was not even praying, he has a vision. 
What makes him think that people that have been praying do not have visions? We are not there to share vision. We are there to pray. I get what I'm saying now. When you lock yourself inside to pray, pray. The whole problem may experience us what? An encounter with the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They may just pray. I don't know how many hours they took for them to pray, but it was enough. You know, so what Elijah, Elijah did? He stayed and prayed and prayed for many hours. Can you decide to try? Break the cord of the hours of prayer you think you know how to do. Another hand is just by the corner. I'm telling you. And as a minister, this one is not an option for you. It's part of your political side. Many of you used to pray three hours before. Now you are praying one hour, two hours. You think you have grown. You have a slide. You will not believe me. You have a slide. I know you told your members they have a slide. You too have a slide. They turn back from where you are falling from. While you give your life to Christ, you fly. But now, when we come for meetings, you are supervisors of prayer. You pray with grass style. Went for one prayer meeting, that's how the guy was praying. I knew that even if he was God, he would not answer his own prayer. God is not your mate. It was him that helped you to become the way you are. Prayer brought you this far. If you neglect the prayer, you will remain where you are. You may never advance. If you see the way we pray, I told them, when it's time for us to pray, I'll go and remove all of this suit. This one is just for you people. If you take some of my pictures, you see me on the mountain. In the bush, I don't look like this. We come from the backside of the mountain, my friends. No man is made in a very organized church. It's a lie. This puppy does not make any great man. We just stand by it. We live here to go to where we are made. Check out the scripture. No man is made. Even Jesus Christ was not made from the land light of people. When I follow you to your secret places, that bush, that uh, house you used to lock yourself, what do you do? Are you busy 24 hours going to work? Well done. The day they will knock you, we will visit you in the hospital. You must be able to give God time and retreat. Many of you, are, you can't remember the last time you retreat with God for just 25 days. Your phone is too important. I put my phone on flight mode all the time. People will continue to disturb you. Somebody told me, what if somebody is dying? I said, let the person die. Do you think I can save anybody? How many people can you save? Are you Jesus Christ? Are you Jesus Christ? That is why when we call for a meeting for you to pray like this, come and pray. You may not have to call us at night that somebody is trying to kill you. You cannot save everybody. Don't in a bit trying to save everybody, you kill yourself. They will look for another person to kill again. And while I began, I thought ministers were not fair because sometimes they are not accessible. But let me tell you the truth if you are making impact very well, you may not have time for yourself. Talk less of people. Then talk more of this time of prayers, I'm telling you. You want to truly have time with God? You must be, you must be busy for people so that you can be available for God. Or you'll be busy for God and you're available for people. And that is why you may never have death. You don't believe what I'm telling you. But this is what I call the whole problem experience. It's when people neglect everything that everybody do to go to a place where nobody can ever think and imagine. It is in that place where men are made. It's very, very important for you to understand that the greatest of men is made in unconventional places. The same way that God encounters you is the same way he's going to encounter the people you are training. I don't know how you found God, sir. But you and I know that we did not find God in all these kinds of organized places. No, it's what you did extra. Those extra moral prayer, extra moral study. That was what made you to become who you are. 
when you do not actually let them do the same there is every chance and possibility that they will keep backsliding all the time how going to ask you say why your members backslide all the time the same thing you are doing you are not telling them to do it you felt it's too burdensome for them my brother you are not supposed to leave them in maintenance service put the same hunger upon them for them to journey deeper so that they can even desire god more than you i don't know about you but some of the people we train they love god more than us they pursue god more than us somebody would just before i just came back before i i left for abuja somebody sent me a text he said he's going on seven days dry fasting i said the lord bless you i have stopped doing seven days dry fasting for a while now But do you know that no matter how much that he does now, we have done it before. And when it comes for me to be able to put in another kind of sacrifice, I put it in another way that he doesn't. And he may finish his dry fast of seven days and not be able to touch the depth I can to touch now. What I need you to understand is that you see you are very young now. Now is the time you have the time. Time is going to come, you will never have the time. If right now you tell me you don't have time for God, I know you will never have time for God again. Is it when you are married or is it when you now begin to control some kind of empires in business? You will not die in your pursuit for God. Don't let any man deceive you. That everything they do for you is hard, is a lie. There is nothing hard there. Nothing hard there. There go lock yourself inside and pray you will not die those days we we'll lock ourselves for days give keys to someone if i die i die you will not die i'm telling you you will never die there is no one that has found god today he will not tell you the story of something terrible he did beyond the coming to church every sunday morning I'm telling you, the reason why you have not found God is simply because you are too comfortable. Like I've always said, God is not lost. You are the one that is lost. But you must be able to position yourself for God to find you and to reveal Himself to you because He ha only has to be revealed. No matter how good our pastors do, they cannot be able to teach us God because God cannot be taught no he can only be revealed that is why an atmosphere must be right for him to come to reveal himself and you must have to be create the atmosphere create create a placement in you for him to come and see and dwell with you when we talk about prayer engage it very well fasting engage it very well studying engage it very well they say giving engage it very well ensure that you don't default in any any okay I promise you we are going to do a combined service of impartation this i was able to give you a little bit of discourse that you will not be asked what happened at upper room you not tell them you fall under the anointing you get uh, no, no, no. at least you can be able to say something is that okay the next one minute we are going to rise to begin to pray i'm going to have all the ministers here with me we are going to take a procession the impartation session what we intend to do is to ensure that everyone everyone is inoculated by god you can be initiated you know christian there is there is an occultic i don't want to call it occultic but i don't know which better word to use side of christianity the blood you drink as communion the everything you do is the same thing the occultic mimic it's communion, is fellowship, my friends. You must be initiated first. The born again experience is an initiation. The 
Baptism of the Spirit is an initiation. We are in a kind of society, they will not understand out there, but you are expected to understand. You are going to be initiated today into a new order in the spirit. So that new kind of spirit will begin to work with you. These spirit are going to grant unto your advantage. And far beyond that, you will receive the supply of the graces of many of us. So that you can advance. You don't want to know the graces I am a partaker of. I don't talk about them too much so that I don't glorify them. Let me tell you the truth. I was really a sojourner. There's almost no place I did not go seeking the anointing, my friends. I have traveled seeking the anointing. And I know people must have to travel to me seeking the anointing. Today, from different countries, from different places, they must travel seeking. You have not wasted your money traveling to come and seek the anointing. You have never. There is a price to pay for anything that is precious. We have given our clothes, given our shoes, given our, given our money, given our phones, given our everything. There is nothing I cannot give for the anointing because the anointing will buy them all again. <laughs> In a thousand fold. What we intend to do this night is to give you the things that can buy money. Your life you have labored and worked. You could not have been able to purchase money after this initiation. Your life will become a purchaser of anything that money cannot buy. When the hands of these men come upon you, grace, mercy, and favor will distinguish you. A man that has this has the key of David, it will open any door. People will not even understand why they do things for you. We are product of places. Many hands have come upon this head. Although some of the hands have given me some kind of weaknesses. But I pay those weaknesses out. And I receive the deposit of their spirit and I function in them. You must understand that after this impartation, your life will change. Things will change in your life dramatically. Many of you can never live a normal life again. Many things will leave you. Many things. Please, everybody must lay hands on them. Everybody. But in case if you don't want to be prayed up, no problem. But I assure you, you will not know when you will need the grace of evidence. Or you will need the grace of wealth. Peter Wealth. Or the grace of uh, Kingsley. You will not know you need the grace of a specific minister. I get what I'm saying now. One of the reasons why I have relevance is everywhere. North, south, east and west. My voice is there. Beyond the nations. It's because any grace you have ever think of or partake of it. I can switch to anything. <laughs> I get what I'm saying now. I can switch to anything. Multiplicity and diversities of grace is an advantage. When you have it infused in your spirit, people will not know why they see you. They see the possibility that lies in whatever they ever like. When you come, it's revealed appropriately. When you receive a multiplicity of grace, you become a hybrid. What we are looking right now is not a man that is aligned to a kind of a man. We need a hybrid. These are the ones that will survive. We want to make you hybrid today. That is what we are going to become with the multiplicity of the grace. Can you rise on your feet as we pray? Ministers, can you come here? Ushers, you are going to put them in line. I don't know how you will intend. Ministers, come. How are we going to do it? Within the few time we have for this impartation session, I need your heart to be open. All of us, everyone, we need that sound. Everyone will lay hands on you. I say each and every one that comes, all of us will still have to lay hands and pray for the person. I don't care whatever is in your family. Every man that is great today has one generational causes or something. They broke it. You can be out of anything by a supply of a grace. 
So immediately when your hand come upon you, one of the things I know that is going to happen to you is that there is going to be an impartation. Impartation goes beyond falling under anointing, although we have reduced it to that. But I assure you, after an impartation, you discover many things will be activated in you. Many, many things. I want you as you are coming here, don't be religious about it. Don't be casual about it. Come praying in tongues. After the hands are laid on you, return back praying. Come with the open heart. How much capacity do you have? Enough here. Oh, you can't even exhaust me. It's not impossible. <laughs> now come with enough capacity. Enough. How much are you willing to dream? As we lay hands upon you, you contain more. There are diverse graces here. Which one you desire? As our hands come upon you, open your heart to receive it. I'm assuring you, you will never remain the same. Are we using oil or are we not using anything? Babalish. Babalitis. Proban the best career of Bakash Katali. I want to say something before we pray for them. is upon us this session is not for everybody this session is only for hungry people if your pride and your ego is not bigger than your hunger then this session is for you do not look the size find the statue <laughs> So I'm going to encourage you to be sensitive, be persistent. Listen, listen. If you fall and you feel you didn't take anything, come back again. Hello? If you fall and wear your spirit and you're not heavier or lighter, come for more. Myself and the men of God that stand behind me. We give you as much as we can. The problem is not if we are willing. The problem is, are you ready? Please, just shift the chairs backwards. Put those cell phones, ushers. Pick the cell phones. So later you can look at those who own them. Before I hand over the mic or before I sing one or two songs. I came into Imo State within the hours of past one. This after, like yesterday afternoon, I didn't know what the meeting would look like. I only trusted the Lord. We drove from Potaco to this place. I entered here. I still did not know what the meeting would look like. I came in here, sat on the chair. I didn't know what the meeting would look like. Few minutes before I was called up to come and minister to you, an angel came to me and said, "Sir, we are ready." <laughs> That's when I knew what the meeting would look like. <laughs> he said, we are ready. Then are you ready? The angels are here. They've been here. Can you shut your eyes and open the eyes of your spirit? Can you close your ears and open the ears of your spirit? Can you shut your nostrils and breathe from the nose of your spirit? Can you lift those hands and plunge into the realms of the spirit? Let your cry be heard. A counter is the meeting between God and hungry men. A counter is the rancor between God and hungry men. And Jacob said, so God was here and I did not know it. Do not be as Jacob. Be sensitive. Open your eyes. Open your hearts. Open your belly. Let the sound of the spirit, let the voice of the spirit, for we are the generation that seek the Father in truth and in spirit. 
Escabila Brasil Aviatane Riku Ascapelia Mantelia Jatana Esatu Capatelia Reteli Casatu Elibaradi Aska Epredonia Kakash Lekeska Pila Brianna Sitan Mate Esatu Capriana Rototi Macapande Legadusia was going on, I heard words in my spirit. I think I shared with the convener of this meeting. See, every day that passes, men exist the earth. And for every man that exists the earth, a spiritual vacancy is created. So every day, God is looking for a man. He's only hungry men that can occupy. The Lord said to me, for everyone that is here, no one is below 12 years or 15 years and in the next 10 15 years men should be looking for you in one mountain or the other it will be an error that in the next 15 years will look for you Steve we can't find you occupying a mountain and yet you cry you attended meetings like this yet you came to 24 hours talk and in the next 10 years, your voice is not being sounded in the spirit. He said, there are mountains here. There are mountains. He also said to me, bringing me to Luke chapter 9, 28. He said, you, he, he said to me, you can't look. If you don't, if, if the protocol to meet Michael Robo is so long, you can meet him in Zion. And like Apostle said, he has said already that when you don't come to Zion, you appear and it's my prayer. So men you cannot be able to touch. He says something, he said, by you don't you don't meet her or yet they will by snapping with him physically. Or do you meet him in the spirit? No matter how you draw close and snap, nothing will enter you. Or do you touch something in the spirit? So how come a light and Moses appeared? The Bible said, Jesus, after eight days, took two of the disciples to pray at the mountain. And as they were praying, Moses that was dead for years, Elijah that was dead for years, appeared physically. Peter saw them. As we are here, men are ancestors in the spirit already here. Akila Kodom Amita. Somebody can walk out from here with the mantle of the in the house of Papa. A Kia Kate, a Suasasa, a Baka, a Kayako, a Kakakiaka, a Komoneka, a Boston doctor by Papa Loa, a man that said, Pray at least four hours. You can live here with a bottle of prayer. It's not a joke. This is how man. That is how this is how men rise. Kabila Toso, as impartation is going on, be angry in the spirit. Let me not be. A, and he said something. Apostle said something that touched me. He said, for every generation, you always have respect, men. You didn't hear it. He said, for every generation, you always have respect, men. I refuse to be one. I can't be among the Western men. I choose to be relevant. And it starts from now. Your hunger and appetite will determine. He said, Who amongst them are testing? As Jesus cried and lifted up his voice on the last day of the feast. He said, Who is thirsty? Let him come and drink of me. Out of his belly, you feel. Kabunaka. There is a radiant order in the spirit. The Bible says, whatever we agree upon the face of the earth must be agreed in heaven. 
except you are not granted privilege there. If I say you should die tomorrow, you must have to die. Spirit will kill you. But if I say you have to live, you must live. At the detriment of my deposit in God. Can we move in procession? Each and every one must be prayed for by each and every of the ministers. I saw this in the spirit, that's what I'm saying. Each and every one. At least each and every one of you must be prayed for by one person. Then also I will join and pray for him also. Make sure you are praying. Far beyond what you have desired, the Lord will do for you. Yes, start now, start now. Ensure that all of them pray for you. Ministers ensure that each and every one is prayed for by you. I don't know how we're going to do it, but ensure try. Just ensure you make your connection in the spirit and in the physical. Holy Spirit, touch them, touch them, touch them. Touch them. Let your fire fall. Let your fire fall. Like fire, like rain. Like fire, like rain. Like fire, like rain. Like fire, like rain. We awake the possibilities of the spirit upon your spirit. Ushers, you have to be prayed for too. Protocol, right? Let your glory. We are waiting to your ordinations in God. We are waiting to your ordinations and calling in God. We have to get you the spirit. 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 Hands are the extension of the hands of Jesus. Our hands are the extension of the hands of Jesus. Our hands are the extension of the hands of Jesus. Can't you advantage of the spirit? Can't you advantage of the spirit? Really no push. Really no push. Holy Spirit, put upon them. Holy Spirit, put upon them. Put upon them. Put upon them. Put upon them. These words will not be wasted. These words will not be wasted. These words will not be wasted. Whether you like it or not, whether you like it or not, you must be ready for. Whether you like it or not, you must be ready for. Many of you, I see the call of God upon you. I see the call of God upon you. You are wondering how it is to be. The Lord said, by my spirit. By my spirit, by my power. By my spirit, by my power. By my spirit, by my power. 
Hamas ini bangga bawa pelor. Apa nak kau bawa des? Apa nak kau bawa des? Abu ini fai, mana dapat? Laba bala laba bos, bala laba bala dia laba bala. Yes, take it, yes, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. The Lord bless. The Lord bless. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. He will do for you what no man can do for you. The Lord, the Lord bless you. The Lord prosper your business. Prosper your academics. The Lord bless your family. The Lord bless the workings of your heart. The plans you advantage. Advantage in the spirit. Many of you are seeing witnesses living in you. Witnesses, witnesses living in you. You have suffered from all kinds of addiction. It's living you right now. It's living you right now. You have tried several times. You could not help yourself. It's living you right now. It's living you right now. It's living you. It's living you. I see spirit jumping out of people. Some of you is living fast. Spirit are living you. Spirit are living you. You are free. You are free. Father, life of Baladesh. Baladesh, Baladesh. My soul never recover from this wonderful. Baba Bala, Baba Baska, Baba Baska. Let this holy journey be my holy life. Who can die for? Let my soul never recover from this holy life. Baba Baba Das, Baba Baba Baska. Let this holy journey be my holy life. Let my soul never recover Under the Lord is From this hunger for you Lord Under the Lord is Let his holy journey Be my holy Yes, pray deeper Pray Time and purpose Pray Spirit keep me on Yes, there is more to you. There is more to you. The devil has lied to you for this long. He has lied. He has lied to you. There is more to you. There is more. Let the 
channels of your spirit be open. Yes.
give him all that proud. Hug the ascended prayer of your mother upon you. The Lord say you will not disappoint your family. You will not disappoint your family. The Lord will surprise you. Oh, 
Satan. of mistakes you have done over time. Make some terrible mistakes that have been speaking against you in the court of heaven. The Lord says to let you know that His mercy has found you, His grace will keep you. I get what I'm saying now. The Lord says, mercy has found you, His grace will keep you. Some are saying you have a disability challenge to give it to your health. That makes you sense. Huh? Okay. The Lord said, His grace, His mercy that has found you, His grace that will keep you. And He's going to bring healing for you, keep it to your health. Then He's going to send you as a voice into your people. I see the ministry to you. I see the ministry to you. You that are addicts. You that are addicts. Addicts. I get what I'm saying. What's your name? Of Jesus, I come to place that wall. I see two levels of encounters that will come for you. Jesus is going to appear to you. I already see Jesus. Jesus is going to appear to you. Jesus appears to you. He's going to strengthen your foundation. As I hope you, I sense a lot of wisdom, a lot of distrust in your heart. The Lord said He will come for you again. He says the Spirit of the Lord. God be with you. Minna, <laughs> Call not yourself small. Do not look down on yourself, says the Lord. He will empower you. He will put you in a leadership position. He will not put you in a leadership position. He will not put you in a leadership position. He will not put you in a leadership position. Out of the mouth of things and sufferings, as you will get praise. Nothing shall be with the wisdom of the ancient, says the Lord. Nothing shall be with the wisdom of the ancient. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. The wisdom of grace and strength of the ancient. Sing the grace of the Lord. 